Hello, my name is Jeffrey Roy, Chairman of the Franklin School Committee, on whose behalf I am speaking with you today. We produced this video so that we could speak directly to you, the most valuable asset of our school district, to explain our position regarding the wage freeze issue and to ask you to work as partners with us in resolving this situation in the best interests of the Franklin students. First, we want you to know that the school committee shares and respects your sincere commitment to student achievement. We understand clearly that to move academic performance, Franklin needs reasonable class sizes, professional development opportunities, and highly qualified staff. Those values have been and remain constant factors in our decision making. That is why for the past decade the members of the school committee have employed every possible device to protect classroom positions. We have reduced and eliminated non-classroom programs. We have increased fees. We have pursued revenue raising options. We have sought capital funds to pay for textbooks. We have fought for stabilization funds. We have fought for overrides. In short, we have fought for you, for students and parents, and for our community's way of life. Almost every penny saved or created has gone to protect teaching positions. Many of you have fought those battles alongside us, and we greatly appreciate your support. We are asking you today to partner with us again at a time of crisis for our community. Obviously, this budget season has proven extremely difficult for both the town and the schools. The initial projected school budget gap of $3.5 million dollars has been reduced through additional state and federal revenue and other one-time cost reductions, but a large gap remains. What we are attempting to do is very straightforward. We are trying to preserve our current level of education resources for one year without spending any more money. Like you, we want to stop going backward in our education offerings. Like you, we want the performance of Franklin students to be at the center of our schools. Preserving all current teaching positions is a top priority, plain and simple. It is the last major piece of this very difficult puzzle. To accomplish that, since December, we have sought a wage concession from the membership of the FEA. There has been a lot of back and forth publicly and privately about who said what and when, who communicated, who didn't communicate, and on and on. As far as we are concerned, those issues are nothing more than distractions from our mutual goals. Today we wipe the slate clean. It's time to focus on the facts. The FEA has proposed to defer the 2.5% wage increase for the 2009-2010 school year and to forgo course reimbursement conditioned on the following. Permanent removal of providing a reason for personal day requests permanent removal of after-school meetings two weeks prior to report cards, and permanent removal of the five floating meetings with principals. The school committee has carefully considered this proposal. We want to protect your course reimbursement funding because we consider professional development one of the cornerstones of your growth and of our academic success. We have agreed to the union's personal day request for the 2009-2010 school year. We have agreed to the union's request to not hold meetings two weeks prior to the issuing of report cards for the 2009-2010 school year. And we have declined the union's proposals concerning eliminating meeting times. Let me explain why the school committee has taken this position. First, the request for the wage freeze was made in the spirit of shared sacrifice, not as a signal to reopen contract negotiations. We expect to begin negotiations toward a new contract with the FEA this year. Negotiations are the appropriate time to discuss these issues. Every other major Franklin Union and non-union personnel have voluntarily agreed to a wage freeze in the coming fiscal year because they understand that now is the time for the community to come together in the best interest of Franklin's residents. Quite simply, we feel it is inappropriate to use the community's budget crisis as leverage to try to extract permanent work rule changes. Now let's address the meeting time issue. We recognize and appreciate that our school district is under intense stress. Administrators, principals, teachers have less time with no less responsibilities 
and even larger caseloads. We understand that time is precious for everyone in the school day, and we appreciate how you and administrators and staff have fought through this issue to protect Franklin's reputation as a high-performing school district. Under the current contract, teachers are required to be in the building for 6.5 hours each day for 183 days per year. In that time frame, Franklin is required to deliver a 21st century education using an 18th century model. It's clearly a problem we must address in the future. Beyond those 6.5 hours, we have contractual meeting times for teachers to meet with principals in the building to collaborate on effective means of advancing student achievement. The meeting times are important because principals feel they need adequate time to meet with the teachers to analyze and improve the following. Instructional practices, MCAS results under state requirements, adequate yearly progress under federal requirements, literacy, and other issues pertinent to teaching and learning. It is the responsibility of our principals, administrative team, teachers, and the school committee to collaborate on creating an educational environment that is best for our students. We believe that what is best is having teachers meeting together to talk about teaching and learning. We cannot afford to lose any more meeting time because research proves that a collaborative focus on learning produces the best academic results. Indeed, this need for time was of paramount concern in a recent survey of teachers in this town. And the issue of time has been part of negotiations discussions going back to 2001. During the 2001 contract negotiations, elementary teachers wanted more preparation time. Rather than having 150 minutes preparation time each week, the teachers requested that they be allotted 220 minutes per week, which amounts to 45 minutes per day. In exchange for providing this additional prep time, the district received five one-hour floating meetings per year from the teachers' union. The district also had to hire paid activity monitors to cover for the additional time given to teachers. During the 2004 contract negotiations, the union attempted to have the five one-hour floating meetings removed from the contract. Instead, the school committee moved to reduce the number of professional de development days from five to three. As a result, the teacher's work year was reduced from 185 days to 183. Under that agreement, the school committee received two less full working days in exchange for keeping the five one-hour meetings spread out over a year. During our most recent contract negotiations, meeting times were again at issue. The parties entered into a side letter agreement whereby a committee was formed consisting of FEA members and administrators to conduct a detailed analysis of the meeting times and their effectiveness. A great number of hours were devoted to discussions on that topic, including a discussion of trading some of the preparation time minutes for meeting time. A final agreement was reached indicating that we would keep the meeting times in place with the addition of more advance notice to teachers. We recognize that the lack of time created by having fewer teachers, larger class sizes, additional responsibilities, and more demanding curriculum is a key pain point for you. We welcome the opportunity to work with you on innovative ways to resolve this issue in upcoming contract negotiations. But a crisis point for the residents of Franklin is not the appropriate venue to figure this out. 